Hello everyone, just thought we'd try doing our reaction video. Uh, this is going right back to the very start of one of the buses, series one, episode one. I'll run through that for you, I'll stop it now and again uh, at opportune moments, so I'll let you enjoy the full episode uh, and I'll give you my opinions throughout. Um, so let's get started with series one, episode one, early shift. Over it, Artie! Welcome to Artie, this is from the Family Park 5. Here the studio is a mess of the Family Park 5. Here the studio is a mess of the Family Park 5. Here the studio is a mess of the Family Park 5. Here the studio is a mess of the Family Park 5. Here the studio is a mess of the Family Park 5. Morning, Mum. Hello, love. Oh, these new schedules of murder, don't they? Don't you happen to get up this time in the morning? No morning papers. Oh. Look at that, even Tony Blackburn ain't up. Tony Blackburn, of course, for you. Sir, your breakfast. Eat it up. I'm not going to eat it in my socks, Mum. Where's my shoes? I put them here last night. I've got them here. They're in the oven to keep warm. Oh. Tough. Tough. Hey, love. I don't know what they wanted to water them for. That was all right as they were. Oh, oh! oh. <laughs> okay. You all right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Next time, give them another five minutes of number six and send the recipe to Jimmy Young. <laughs> now, look here, Stan. You've gone right through the soul again. I can't help that. It's the brake pedal that does it. Well, you shouldn't press it down so hard. Don't be daft. I don't press it down so hard. I go right through a brick wall. Come on, come on, eat up your breakfast. You're looking very pale, you oh, know. Oh, turn it in, will you? Ah, just the same when you was a lad. Always, always pale-faced and thin. Mum, Mum, can I have a cup of tea, please? Oh, yes, of course, of course. Thank you. There we are. Just up and down, um, as Michael Robbins, Arthur, comes in here. Um, on the buses, uh, was written as a vehicle for Reg Varney by Ronnie Wolf, Ronnie Chesney. We have written for them uh, in the past, these past uh, sitcom, The Rag Trade, which was on the BBC in the early 1960s. Um, that's why if you know, watch all the early episodes, the character of um, Stan doesn't really change throughout the whole seven series. Some of the lesser characters you'll notice early on you can see that the writers are getting to know how to use the best use the uh, actor's skills and uh, incorporate that into their characters. Uh, that's why you'll notice a little bit different Blakey. He's a little bit more strict and severe in the early episodes. He's got rules more of an iron rod, whereas he comes more gullible in later episodes, later series. Um, the same with Olive. Olive's not really given a lot to do in the early episodes. She spends a lot of time coughing and wheezing, not got a lot of lines really. That's where the writers are first getting to really know her. As she was a late sort of like cast into the show, was Anna Karen. And obviously the mum there, Cicely Cook, then she only stood in for Dorothea, who wasn't available for the first series. <laughs> Just because you're on the early shift, you don't have to get the old house older. Me and Olive's up, been up since five o'clock. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Oh, you didn't bother to come down. Stan would have got you a nice cup of tea. Aye. He married my sister, not me. <laughs> yeah, well, since I'm up, I'll have my breakfast. Now, well, you have to wait, dear. I've got to get Stan's lunch ready first. Stan's lunch? I thought you always ate in the canteen. I did, but with these new schedules, I'm never back in the depot in time. Will you stand for that? Every man is in top of canteen facilities. Your union should have done something about it. They did. They agreed. I suppose you was I suppose you was too frightened to stand up at the meeting and say anything. Oh no, I wasn't. Well, why don't you speak up for yourself? I wasn't there. It was my bingo night. <laughs> Typical. No wonder the unions are getting infiltrated. You should have spent the evening with your brother members. I did. We had more at the bingo hall than we had at the meeting. <laughs> ah, that's graceful. I pride myself on the fact that I've never missed a union meeting. 12 years I've been treasurer of the railway union and every member comes to every meeting. With you as treasurer, I'm not surprised. Are you trying to suggest that yeah, I'm... No, that you 
Yeah, again, you can see uh, early doors have already got the dynamics of the friction that there always is between <coughs> between Arthur and uh, Stan. Obviously, the talk of the unions, obviously, uh, it was um, in that era then, the late 1960s, early 70s, uh, the unions were much more prevalent, they were much, had much more power than the workplace back then than what they do today. Yeah, they smell nice. I'll have a couple of them sausages for my breakfast. Oh, I'm sorry, there's no more left. These are for Stan's lunch. Oh, I don't like cold bangers, Mum. Oh, you're not going to have them cold, love. I'm putting them in the thermos. <laughs> How am I supposed to get them out there? Oh, don't worry. Pour don't them worry. on a plate or something. <laughs> well, have you got any bacon? Oh, afraid not. He used that for Stan's sand sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> Here, Arthur. Try a bit of fried bread. Fried bread? That's no good for a working man. Working man? You a working man? A booking clerk at Crossley Junction? Three trains a day, two of them cancelled? <laughs> <laughs> The amount of work you get through, mate, you could survive on a cream cracker. <laughs> well, I suppose I can fill up with cornflakes. Hey, where's the milk, Mum? Oh, dear, I am sorry. It's finished. Not Stan's lunch again. Oh, no. Rusty's breakfast. Come on, hey. love. Yes, come on. <laughs> You'll have to wait till the milkman comes. Time for walk. Morning, Mum. How are you? Yeah. Not very well. I had a terrible night. Oh, dear, I'm sorry. Oh, God, here we go again. Morning, Stan. <laughs> oh, come on, say good morning to your sister. Morning, Olive. Coughing better. <laughs> <laughs> she had me awake all night with that chest of hers, weaving and puffing away. And I've been in bed with a steam engine. <laughs> <laughs> watch it, love, watch it. You burst your boiler. Oh, no. Stop fussing. Well, it's murder, Mum. Olive can't help it. All this carry on about her wheezes. Sunny when she breathes. <laughs> That's right, love. You, 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 you take the syrup. It'll do you good. It's always the same when there was children. You know, my two always have a fun weak chest. That reminds me. Have you got your, have you got your vest on? Yes, I have. Leave me alone. <laughs> There you are. Now you've got a cough now. Come on, you better have some of this creosote. Creosote wipes out coughs. It wipes out dry rot and all. <laughs> I don't want to treat, take nothing back, mate, I'm telling you. No, I get poison enough from the cab fumes without having to take that. And, God, look at the time I'll be late, Mum. I'll have to borrow your bike, Olive. Yeah, wait a minute. Here's your lunch. All right. Here you are. All right. Here's your sandwiches. Sorry, Mum. Your bangers. Yeah. That's it. And there's your tea. Right, oh, don't do that. It leaks. Oh. <laughs> That's it. Tell our mum, I've got to go there. You wait! Here's your tea. Oh, Ooh, better not drink that. Only on the number 11 route, I've got nowhere to stop. <laughs> There's a stop in the middle of the high street. I didn't mean that. I mean, if I drink too much liquid, it goes right... Oh, never mind. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and here you'll see... Uh... Dark, but take it from me. This is um, uh, Stan coming along on a bike to the depot. This was filmed on Lordship Lane, Wood Green, where they filmed at the Eastern National Bus Depot in uh, Wood Green. They had to use this depot here, that is here. They had to use um, Eastern National and not London Transport because um, Stuart Allen, the producer, before they got on the buses started, obviously needed use of our depot and a fleet of buses. They originally went to um, they originally went to London Transport. They didn't want uh, anything to do with it. They feared it would make their buses look unpunctual and their staff look lazy and uncooperative. So um, they decided against any involvement, but uh, thankfully Eastern National, which was another bus company and based in London at that time, <coughs> decided that yeah, they would um, help out. So they um, gave them the use of Eastern National. They only filmed externally at the Eastern National Depot in Lordship Lane with Green. All of the internals was filmed on a depot on a depot set at Wembley Studios, LWT. We produced on the buses. Uh, they set they had the studios at Wembley, Stones Throw from Wembley Stadium, and um, that's where the depot set was. I 
I guess I'm then going to be careful, sir. Here comes our new clipping. Why don't you write side sir? Why don't you felt that, mate? Yeah, come on, hurry up and sign in, will you? Out in a minute. Yeah, all right then. Good, sir, we are. Hello, mate, how are you? All right, Vic. Need these new schedules of murder, aren't they? All murder. I don't know what they're wanting water for. Yeah, watch out, here comes a Gestapo. <laughs> <laughs> You're not frightened of him, are you? I'm surprised at you, Jack. Me, I don't. Oh. <laughs> Get in the bus. I'm just getting in there, Inspector. Don't! He's straight away. The inspector there very much more ruling with an iron rod than he does in later episodes. Um, uh, here he's much more of a uh, rules with an iron rod and much more um, dictatorial like sort of uh, inspector. Obviously they tweaked it a bit and yeah, get more human out of the character and they would say it worked. And the same with um, Jack, you get times in the early episodes when he's very conscious about getting the bus out on time. Which she obviously isn't, and they are uh, serious. Go and put all that stuff in the cab like that. It could cause a nasty accident. Put it on the stairs, Jack. Oh, come on, give us here. Come on. Watch it, watch it. You spill me sausages. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose you have studied the new schedule, have you? You know the new stops and timing and stages and turnarounds and change points and all that? Credit yeah. me with a bit of sense, will you, to mug it up? I know the route. Drive away. <laughs> hey, Jack. What? Where are we going? <laughs> Number 11, Cemetery Gates, Fire and High Street. Come on, Come on, mate. Due back at 11.33 or 17 minutes late. Yeah, I reckon it's very good. The way I worked it out, I'd be 25 minutes late. These new schedules are murder. Yeah, I'll stand. Here's your lunch. Thanks, Jack. You know you're due out at 11.59, don't you? Hear that? 11.59. And the flipping canteen don't open till 12 o'clock. Yeah. Where am I supposed to eat my grub? Hey, where am I supposed to sit? You can use the brench provided, can't you? Charming, eh? Hey? Look, Jack, I've just come out of a warm so cab. I'm not eating my grub in this drafty shed. Oh, get back in the cab then. Why did not I think of that? Good idea, Jack. Thanks. That's <laughs> mate. <laughs> See, the heat's gone off the cab now. Yeah. Hey, it's all, mate. Can't understand him. <laughs> What's the matter? Stop it going in. I can't get my sausages out. <laughs> what you doing? I'm trying to suck them out. <laughs> Oh, now I've got it. Right. <laughs> it's, it's freezing cold in this cab. We'll turn the engine on and warm the cab up. Yeah, what did I think of that? <laughs> oh. And you can have... What's about the cards? You tell the time now, then. What's up, cab? Why? What's it say? 11.52, why? You're not due out until 11.59. I'm not going out till 11.59. Well, will you switch the engine on for then? Well, it's cold in here. Warm the cab up. Switch that off at once. What do you think this is? It's wasting a couple of fuel lights. Switch it off. He's having his lunch in comfort. Yeah. Lunch? That's a cab for driving and not for eating in. Get out, out of there right away. Come on, what do you think you're on, mate? That's a bus on a mobile canteen. Get back in there, Stan. <laughs> if the management won't open the canteen <laughs> till 12 o'clock, you can stay in there. <laughs> You get down out there at once. I could report you, you know. It could be uh, two weeks suspension ah, for you. That's nice, isn't it? Intimidation. Yeah. yeah that's right. lovely. Take no notice, then. <laughs> he can't intimidate you. Oh, yes, he can. I'm getting out. Get down. Get back in. Get down. Get in. You get down. Get in. You get off. It's a matter of principle. I'll better phone our union office. Now, Jack, 
Don't bring the union into this. No, you're right, they never help. Right, <laughs> we've got to settle this ourselves. Yeah. Are you going to get out of there, aren't you? Oh, oh. Don't you dare get out. <laughs> I'll go and see the general manager then, won't I? Right. <laughs> 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 hey, him. Big toe between his legs, eh, Jack? Yeah. Come on, then, get out. Hey, <laughs> get out. <laughs> what are you talking about? Come on, what do you think you're doing? Get out! You just told me to get back in! That was when the inspector told you to get out, but now I'm telling you to get out, and I'm the shop steward, and I'm convening a meeting, so get out! <laughs> What about my lunch? <laughs> What's the point of having new schedules if we have to suffer? Right. Brother Stan here has been threatened by an inspector. He has been intimidated for eating his lunch in his camp because the management wouldn't open the canteen till 12 o'clock. I put it to you, brothers. No canteen, no buses. Right, uh, right let's take a vote on it. Signify the usual manner, all those in favour. So man at the back there, just see him putting his hand up there. That's uh, John M. East. He went on to be, uh, direct a number of, uh, so we say, adult films in the um, 1970s, uh, mid to late 1970s. Um, the West Indian actor, you can see standing right by the bus, that's Jules Wall. Uh, sorry, that's Glenn Witter. Uh, played Chalky for the first six series of On the Buses. Uh, you see them in, the, in a lot of the episodes, but you never actually uh, gets credited a lot. He's only credited for, I think, about six episodes, but you probably you see him in the background, maybe 40, maybe episodes. We are unanimous, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Right, motion carried. We are withdrawing our labour forthwith. Oh. Yeah. Here, can yeah. I have my lunch now? about so early. Hey, what's happened? Nothing. I'm on strike. On strike? Yeah. Oh, so that's why there was no buses. Oh, really, I do think you might have told us. Me and Olive Bobby was walking two miles in the pouring rain. We couldn't tell you. It happened so quickly. It's what's called a lightning strike. Ah, oh, Sam. <laughs> Sam, don't tell me you couldn't get the men to hold up the strike for your mum. They wouldn't hold it up for Frank Cousins' mum. Oh, well, the dockers do. <laughs> That one in 18. You know, number 18, his mum, she always gets her meeting before the strike. <laughs> and last year, a Christmas nuts also. <laughs> My hair's wrong! <laughs> oh, now, <dear. laughs> oh, stand here, that cough. I can hear it. Sounds a lot better to me. <laughs> You'll feel much better after our cup of tea. Now, look, stand about some of those lovely fairy cakes. Get them out, will you? Just a minute, Ruffy. Are you yeah, all right? Yeah, They're not wet, eh? Hey? Wet? I don't know. I'm not never looking in the bag yet. Oh. There's two theories to the cat that Sam just peeked down there. Uh, it's possible it was Bob Grant's, because Bob Grant was a great cat lover. He one of his cats featured in our later um, episodes of On the Bus Season 7. Or it's possible as well, because rumour has it that there was a um, pet cat at the studios in Wembley. At that time, so it's either or it could be one or the other. It could be the studio's cat, could be Bob Grant's, because um, the actors did lend out the pets for filming. Anna Karen's dogs featured in a lot of the episodes as well of One the Buses. Well, I'll tell you a little bit damp. Here. Yeah. Oh, you paper bags at it, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, hang on. Oh, look. <laughs> Careful of the bulb. Oh, I don't know about that. Look at the bun. That's not bad, is it? 
<laughs> Ooh, I can't eat that. Well, it's no different than when you dip it in your tea. <laughs> Don't talk like that. Well, let's face it, my matter how it ends up in your stomach, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> hey, come here, Ollie. Oh, is that the front door? Yeah. Is that you, Arthur? Yes, of course it's me. Arthur, there's a bus strike. Have you heard? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have heard. You busmen ought to be shot striking on a wet day like this. Well, that's the best time to strike, isn't it? Rainy days and Christmases. The railways taught us that. <laughs> I'm so through to the skin. Oh, dear, I'm sorry. Give it to me. You are in a state, aren't you? Oh, the sopping. Oh, now. Never how mind, did, dear. How did you get so wet? Standing in a bus stop for an hour, waiting for a bus. Well, that was daft, wasn't it? Well, how was I to know you were on strike? Well, stand at a bus stop for an hour, nothing comes along. Blimey, you must have thought something had gone wrong. Well, you lot run the buses, we thought it was normal service. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen here, mate. Well, I'm you busmen are a lot of layabouts. Yeah. I'd like to meet the bloke who started it. Would you? <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, mate... Because when I do, I'll knock his block off. Who was it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well... <laughs> when I find out, I'll let you know. Your union had no right bringing you out on strike. They didn't. We did it ourselves. Oh, so it's unofficial. I suppose you know you'll get no strike pay. Stan, is that right? No, no wages. Won't there be no money coming in? That's right. It could be out for months, not a single penny. Olive, have you heard that? Oh, Mum, don't worry. Hey, look here, Stan. What are we going to do for money? We've got nothing behind us. I've just paid all the rates and, and there's the, the phone due and the HP. Where are you at? Again, you get um, there's a woman theme here on the buses as well. It's about the financial hardships of the family as well. Always um, comes into play. Have to tell the men you want to go back. Don't waste your breath, Mum. I'll really tell you go back before he does. It wouldn't hurt you to pay a few instalments on it for a change. And on the fridge, I paid that for the last two years. Oh, we can't let them take the fridge back, can oh, we? Oh, let them take it back. We won't have nothing to put in it. We could all start and that as far as it is. <laughs> well, we'll just have to live on Arthur's money, won't we? Then we will starve. <laughs> no, it just means I shall have to start watching every penny. Start? Blimey, you never stopped. Well, at least he's going to work tomorrow. Yeah, more than you, sitting around doing nothing. I won't be sitting around doing nothing, mate. I'll be lying in bed. <laughs> lying in bed yeah. all day long? No, only till the pub's open. It's great being on strike. No wonder it's catching on. Hang on, I'll get it after. Hello? Mm -mm. No, it's me, Stan. Oh, hello, Jack. Strike committee. Big deal. Yeah? Oh, God, no. When? What time? Yeah, all right. Yeah, all right, yeah. Right. Tell her. What's up, Stan? They want me on picket duty. Oh, well, it's only right, isn't it? Yeah, but I've got to be there at half past five in the morning. That means I'll have to be up by half past four. <laughs> Hardly worth going to bed, is it? <laughs> Olive, I'll have to use your bike. Oh, give me no, a drop. you won't. I shall need a bike to get to work myself, shall I? How am I going to get on picket duty? Up on a bus. <laughs> Here, Jack, I'm fed up with this. We've been standing at... Then you're on the uh, left of shot there, you can see Rudolf Mocker went on to uh, star in another hit uh, comedy of that time, uh, Love Thy Neighbour. This was the only episode that he featured in. There was talk about making a, um, uh, the character might be in a permanent fixture, but it wasn't to be. For five hours and nobody's even tried to get in. <laughs> They've not even tried to start up a bus. Oh, you never know what the management will get up to. Got to show them we're solid. I'm not all right. I can't even straighten my fingers. <laughs> oh, here. When are we going to knock off for lunch? Knock off for lunch? Yeah. Look, we do an eight-hour shift, non-stop. Way up, Stan. Here comes your mother. Look, we don't want no interference from the women. Oh, she's probably passing. She'll be all right. Um, yeah. I had to come see you. all right. Yeah. I bought you a few things. I'd worm if I were you, Mum. It's half cold here. I know. That's why I bought you an extra pair of warm socks yeah. and hot water bottles. Yeah, and your mother is making us look ridiculous. Yeah, she, she won't be long Here yeah. you are. Some nice hot tea yeah, Tom, and Mum. some warm buns. Ah, some warm buns. Lovely. Oh, yeah. that's very nice, yeah. Don't eat those yet. You make yourself look ridiculous. Here's <laughs> <laughs> some cherry link just in, oh. case, in case the cold goes down to your chest. I'll, I'll put it in my uh, Look, look. That's it, There's Mum. some blokes coming across the street with a camera. I know what I want. Yeah. Uh, oh, we are from the TV news. We'd like a few shots for tonight's programme, OK? This um, bit of standing here would have been on the studio set. 
Um, so there would have been, like, where you've seen the film crew, a mum coming, that was filmed up in Lodge at Lane with Green, but this would have been back on a studio set. OK. Oh, yes, that'll be all right, yeah. We uh, we need the publicity, that's OK, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, I reckon it's all right, yeah. Yeah, I think you look a bit pale. Don't you think you ought to have some makeup on? Shut up, Mum. Well, they all do. The Queen and Mr Wilson. Well, he probably Boris Barbara Castle's powder puff. <laughs> Al Wilson, Barbara Castle, both um, uh, Labour politicians. One was the Prime Minister, of course. Oh, I think you'll be all right. <laughs> no, wait a minute, I've got a, I got a bit of lipstick here. That'll help anyway, come on. No, no. turn it and you're making me look a fool. Hey, listen, they've started up one of the buses. Hey, they're going to take it through the back gate. Yeah, quick, we've got to stop them. Yeah, hold that, Mum. Hold this. What are going to do with this? Hey, well, I don't want that taken. Here, Sam, wait for me, Sam. Thank you. <laughs> this um, aisle here, it was a mute, led into a muse. That's been demolished now, and our uh, bingo hall stands here now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look at that! This is speckless. They're bringing a bus out. Oh, ruddy stripe breakers. Scabs, scabs, black leg, black leg. Look at it. Yeah, we'll have to stop it. How are we going to do that, Jack? Lie down. Lie down? Yeah, lie down in front of the bus. You him? No, you. Yes, you. Me. Me? Oh, oh, no. oh, oh, just, oh, just, just a minute, Jack. Oh. Hang on, hang on. I just thought of something. Why don't you lie down there? No, no. I'm the committee leader. I've got to negotiate with him. Oh, now, come on, lie down. Quick, lie down before he gets by. I'll try the lie down after it's gone by. Besides, you might not stop. No, what well, we'll get him for manslaughter. <laughs> I'd love to see those inspectors inside. Yeah, so would I. But he might not know how to drive that thing. Besides, I know that bus is a dodgy brake. Yeah, come on, quick. Oh, come on. Lie down. This is ridiculous. I feel like I'm hitting You're ruining a suit. You leave him alone. Well, it's been raining. You'll catch his death of cold. Uh, come on, come on. Cut all this time for it. Come on, oh, get no, up. No, 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 don't you kick my son. He ain't done you no harm, have he? All right, all right. Today, don't like a lot. That's all. That's all. Stay there all night for like her. <laughs> I say, uh, just a minute. Let's have a shot. Oh, what do you want me? Right. Yeah. I say, what's that red stain on your coat? What stain? <laughs> it's blood, Mum! It's blood! Are you sure? It's just what we wanted. We'll have a ball out now. Blood! You've been injured. Uh, don't get up. Stay there. Are you all right, love? Are you all right? Oh, I don't know, Mum. Is she... Uh, one minute. No, don't panic. Don't panic. It's that rotten cherry syrup you've got oh, in this morning. Look, I broke the bottle. Oh, Stan. Focus on the blood. Yeah, no, don't panic, mate. Just shut up. What? Man, what is... Uh, oh, oh, yes, yes, blood, yes. Oh, you're right, I'm right, I'm right. Times very unsettled, and now the regional news. Hey, hurry up, Mum, I'm on. All right, I'm all right, I'm coming. Come on, I've got a chair here, sit down. That's it, sit down. I bet they won't even bother to show it. No, what's that then? Hey, what's that? Hey, hey, look, Mum, that's me. Well, all you can see is your backside. <laughs> well, it's very nice. Yeah. As the unofficial Luxton and District bus strike moved into its second day, there was drama at the bus depot when driver Stan Butler threw himself in front of the bus to prevent it being taken out and was slightly injured. What a ruddy fraud! Shh! The bus company when he left school at the age of 14. Hey, is that me? Very yes, love. Oh, something's gone wrong. My face looks, looks all fat. Oh. That's because your face is all fat. Uh, shut up. There's something wrong with a set, that's what it is. Afternoon, <laughs> <it's stopped. laughs> that makes you look a lot better. Shut up. Uh, I smile, look. Oh, yes, you smile. Yes, have you got it? Yeah. Oh, yes, a lovely smile, that yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't have bothered. Uh, I asked Stan Butler if he thought his courageous action was justified. For a bitter end. Uh, you know what, that's about it. Here, who's that stupid woman? It's you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, so it is, yeah. <laughs> And now some football. Well, all right, Burke, you made it yourself. What are you talking about? Oh, I think it was very nice. So do I. I. Really. <laughs> it's a pity your teeth are so crooked, though, love. Well, didn't oh. notice much, did it, huh? Well, I don't know. <laughs> do you think it would be too late to wear a brace? <laughs>
Well, you and your pals will have to give in now. The management certainly won't after that little lot. Well, at least I've been on telly. <laughs> so have the monsters. Oh, here, the buses are coming on. Look, the buses, look. Well, here we are. And here is a news flash. We've just heard that after a long meeting and in view of the injury sustained by driver Stan Butler, the uh, hero of the day, the management have agreed to the busman's demand in order to avoid further bloodshed. Well, uh, <laughs> can be oh, Stan, you won, you won, and, and all because of you, they give in. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm a burk, am I? Well, I'll tell you what, Arthur. I reckon from now on I can tackle anything. Well, you can start right away. What do you mean, Mum? <laughs> Tackle the washing up. Yeah. <laughs> what does it matter, fellas? We won, didn't yeah, we? That's the thing. <laughs> we talked the management of thing. Yeah, now, now we know how to get what we want, don't we? Of course, yeah. <laughs> come on, Stan, come on, Jack. You do that in two minutes, get in the bus. Hold your air on, hold right. your air on. We're the bosses now, you know. <laughs> oh, yes? Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, in that case, you better send out for your smoked salmon and caviar for your lunches then, had you? What do you mean? Take a look. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, they can't need to go on strike now. That's a dead liberty, that is. Don't mind, Jack, we can't do anything about it. Oh, can't we? What do you mean? No, one bus leaves this depot until we get our grub. Well, how are we going to do that, then? Lie down in front of the bus. That's it, lie down in front of the bus. Wait a minute! No!